Hey everyone, welcome to Hungry Generation TV. We are so happy to have you guys with us again on this special interview that we have uh, with some special guest speakers with us today. And we're so blessed and privileged to have with us Prophet Dixon and Dr. Beryl. And so we just wanna get right into this wonderful interview with them, finding out more about their lives and what God is doing in their ministry. So thank you so much for coming. We are so happy that you guys could be with us today. So um, just to get right into the interview, um, can you just tell us a little bit about yourselves and about your ministry, just first by introducing yourselves and what God is doing in your guys' lives? Praise the Lord. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and glad in it. My name is Prophet Charles Dixon, and this is my beautiful wife, Dr. Beryl Dixon. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. So if you don't mind just telling us a little bit about um, your background and, and about your ministry. My background is uh, God has called me to be a prophet of God unto the body of Christ, to bring inspiration, the word of the Lord, the now word for the people of God. And so I'm really a servant of God who waits and hears from God and deliver the message that God has given me according to the biblical principles. Amen. So can you just tell us where are you from and also how did you get called into the prophetic ministry? Really, I'm from heaven. <laughs> <laughs> I come from Ghana, West Africa. And I, I, early in my uh, age, uh, my parents were Catholics and they took me, they just sent me to the Catholic seminary with the intention of becoming a Roman Catholic priest. Mm -hmm. And the curiosity killed the cat. Because uh, once I was there, I was very curious, and uh, friends of mine introduced me to the Bible, reading the book of Acts, seeing the demonstration with the action, what the disciples were doing. And uh, at that time, now I know the Catholics are good, they read the Bible. But at that time, you know, uh, we're not allowed to read the Bible or we're not encouraged to read the Bible. Uh, but when you tell somebody not to do something, guess what? They would like to do it, <laughs> especially kids. Yes. You know, so it was really curiosity. But the Bible said all things work for good mm -hmm. to them that are called. So I would think it was by accident, but God had planned it. Mm -hmm. So I began to read the book of Acts and I was really intrigued. Mm -hmm. Because we're not told, uh, nobody preached, nobody told us, but this is the word of God. And so the more I read it, I got so interested. And then my friends uh, went to a prayer meeting, uh, committed and gave my life to the Lord. Mm -hmm. And then when I, I got saved, all of a sudden, I began to experience the things I read in the Bible. So I got confused. I said, whoa, 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 they don't practice this in my church, but this is the word of God the word of God and I'm seeing the demonstration yeah so I got really excited and uh, you know I could not keep it to myself so in the seminary uh, I'll get out uh, kids uh, students on Friday and we just read the Bible do exactly what the Bible says and I was seeing evidence because the Bible says and this sign shall follow them that believe Amen. shall like faith I believe the word of God and there was evidence <laughs> and so uh, the prayer meeting began to grow, began to increase, you know, and students were coming and they got to the authorities. They said, so there's some dude here, you know, Charles uh, has been having a Bible study and reading the Bible and uh, these children are having experiences. Wow. So I was called on the red carpet three times and I was warned, you cannot read the Bible, you can't do what you're doing. And I began to question. I said, here we're going to become priests mm -hmm. to serve God. And by you taking the manual, the book of God away from me. I said, what is going on? Yeah. So uh, I, I was told to go see the psychiatrist <laughs> three, three times just to check me out because they knew I was crazy. <laughs> and uh, yes, it was okay. It was a journey <laughs> of love. But I said, we went, uh, I went to the psychiatrist says, Several times, he himself got agitated and frustrated. He said, wow. young yeah, man, do you know you have an experience with God? I said, but that's not what they are telling me. So going back and forth, lo and behold, uh, they got upset and uh, the young man kicked me out of seminary. But that was good. Yeah. 
you know in God there's no accident you know God will, will plan your steps because the Bible says the steps of a righteous one are ordered of the Lord not ordered of your circumstances but the Lord and so many things will happen to us we don't understand it at present but God has got things for us so as I got kicked out I began to go to a church where uh, saw the charismatic move the move of God and again, I was curious mm -hmm. and uh, hung around and the anointing fell on me and uh, God had told me to be a prophet, but it took me a long time. Because of my background, mm -hmm. uh, I knew the only person who, was, who could hear from God was the Pope. Mm -hmm. And here I'm hearing from God, you know, God was speaking to me. I, became, I wow. got really confused. I said, okay, now I think the people are right. I was told not to read the Bible. And now I'm reading the Bible. I'm hearing the voice of God. Yeah. God is speaking to me. Hey, am I going crazy or what? <laughs> you know, other people, you know, I talk to people, my peers and people who I look up to. And, and they told me, we told you not to read the Bible. <laughs> now you see what is happening. You know, I mean, you claim God is speaking to you. Wow. And at that time, around me or, you know, within my local, you know, uh, I was the only person that was experiencing the thing. So you can understand as a young man, I was confused. Yeah. I said, oh my God, it could be there is an iota of what you're saying. You don't read the Bible, now reading the Bible, now you're going crazy. God is speaking to you and I'm not a Pope. I got problems. Mm -hmm. But every time I, I, I go to God, God will say, I've called you, my hand is mm -hmm. upon you. And so when we are in a place we're praying and uh, I was experiencing the move of God, I pray, say, God, please don't speak to me. Lord, I know I don't want to. God, don't talk to me. Don't speak to me because, you know, they say I'm crazy. Yeah. So it took me a long time, but the mercy of God, the grace of God, the hand of the Lord. I said, read the Bible, I saw, you know, uh, the manifestation, uh, the gift of the Holy Spirit, and uh, God in His loving kindness. I do understand it. I, I did understand in the Bible, read it, and it, it took me a while. So my journey was a journey of ups and downs, jigsaw puzzle, confusion, but God was merciful to me because uh, I didn't get anybody to mentor me. So I'm very passionate about the prophetic ministry. Amen. That's my journey. I, I really love your story because mm -hmm. I think that there's so many people who can identify with yes. with that, with mm -hmm. your particular uh, story in, mm -hmm. in that confusion of what's happening, you know, yeah. reading the Bible and, and for those of us who are wanting to go in that direction as well, mm -hmm. it's very encouraging to hear that mm -hmm. that that people who have already made it yeah. in that area of life also went through those times of confusion. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. your testimony is, I think, one that a lot of our viewers can really identify with. Praise God. So thank you so much. I love my and, confusion and frustration. <laughs> <laughs> and, and how long now have you been, um, you know, operating in this prophetic ministry and the, and walking in the call of God on your life. Really, you want to say how old I am? <laughs> <laughs> that too. We, we no, all no, want no, to know. No, no, no. That's good. I've been operating on this for a long time. By the grace of God, uh, uh, in the 70s, and I would uh, narrow it down to 73. 72, 73. That's when I really began to experience the move of God. So I really have walked in this for a long time. Wow, praise God. You know, and there's been a, a lot of road bumps and other things. Uh, and again, I always uh, fall back to the mercy of God, the revelation. And I always went back to the mm -hmm. Bible to read and see if there's a, a, a modular, a model. Then I patterned my life. And uh, God in His mercy helped me. And then uh, uh, when I, I went to a school and uh, did my theological studies with my doctorate, I really delved into it to, uh, to really study research and uh, I need this is of God. And if you know this of God, it, it brought such assurance, it mm -hmm. brought such a peace, and then I carried the torch wow. to help my generation. Praise God. Amen. Your story is very encouraging. Praise mm -hmm. God. Wow, we thank God. 
And Dr. Beryl, I mean, we cannot leave you out on in this <laughs> in this journey because you yourself are another fire breathing woman of God. And I know even for people like me, just watching the way that you minister alongside your husband is like is so powerful and so reassuring for all women out there to see that wow, God can use us too. I think there's such a a a stigma out there that you know, women shouldn't operate in that. So I know for me, right. see, even seeing you is just so encouraging. So um, I know that our viewers are going to want to know, like, tell us about your background and how you got into ministry, how you guys met, and, and how God began operating in your life as well. Sure. Um, first, I think what's important to talk a little bit about what our ministry is. I think that many people talk about the gifts of the Spirit, the operation, the supernatural. Um, people write about it, but they don't experience the power of it itself. Yeah. And I think that the ministry that God, by His grace, has given us is one that brings the writings of the Old Testament mm -hmm. into the experience of today. Amen. And so you see the signs and the wonders, the miracles, you hear a prophetic word that doesn't just give you a scripture, but gives you blueprint for mm -hmm. your destiny. Yeah. And, and so I think that the ministry that God has given us is one to go into the body of Christ and to edify, to lift up, to encourage, to encourage how? By giving you a word that comes directly from heaven. Amen that speaks to you where you are today on earth. And that word should now bring you closer to the cross, closer to the Father. It yeah. should bring you closer to what God has destined for your life before he ever created you and formed you in your mother's womb. And so I think that's the very essence of the ministry that God has given us. So there are so many healings um, and so many prophecies. But the beauty of God is that he doesn't limit the use of his gifts that he gives us mm -hmm. just to the house of the Lord. And so we're able to go outside of the church. Mm -hmm. um, even today in a restaurant, there was ministry to a lady who was the waitress and she was overwhelmed at, and she goes, do you know me? And we're like, <laughs> no, but heaven knows you. Right? Amen. <laughs> and um, so I think that um, this ministry because of our childlike faith, mm -hmm. because we understand that it's not us, we're purely vessels, but it's God who is flowing through us to cause the healings, the miracles, to cause the prophetic word to come. Clearly, we don't know A to Z about a person's life in a natural sense, mm -hmm. but God, the one who created you, who gave you a destiny, knows everything about you from birth to death. And we only have ears like the spiritual NSA um, <laughs> to go into heaven and listen to what the Father, the Son, and the Spirit are saying. And then we take that word and we speak that word over your life. And the reason that that word is so important to be spoken over their life is because the word of God is alive. Amen. Amen. So the Word of God comes into a natural setting and transforms the setting, transforms your environment, transforms any and everything about your life because God's Word is all-powerful. So I think that's the beauty of the ministry that God has given us and we are so humbled that the Lord would trust us um, with the details of people's yeah. lives and be able to pull them into a closeness to heaven that maybe they didn't have the day before or the week before. And um, as for me, um, my background was not always in ministry. Um, I originally was in uh, the media, television and radio, um, producing programs and things like that. And um, from there, I went into law. So wow. I became a lawyer. Um, I studied in Oxford. Um, I did a number of things in the legal community. And I then began to work in the political arena as an attorney. Mm -hmm. um, from there, I received a prophecy. Funny we're you know, talking about the <laughs> prophetic, but I received a prophecy. And the prophecy was that God was going to use me in the political arena to bring righteousness into politics. Um, wow. And at the same time, I received a word that said, God is going to raise you up in politics and in his kingdom. So you will operate in both arenas. For me, I felt like, no, how can that be? Because I don't have an interest in running for politics. 
Um, I enjoy the political environment, but I didn't necessarily see, oh, I'm going to run for politics. And that is why you can receive a word from a prophet and it not confirm anything. In the body of Christ, we so often think that when a prophet comes to prophesy, it should confirm something that you already know, that you already heard from heaven or someone has spoken to you. No, he is God all by himself. Amen. Oh, and wow, he yeah. can do something that you've never thought about mm -hmm. because he's in full control. And he is Alpha and Omega. So when I received the word for Paula about running for office, I thought, mm, I'm an attorney in this arena. I don't necessarily need to run for office. Yeah. But God had a different idea, and his idea is always better. And um, there's something that my husband always says, prophet. He goes, when God is up to something, even a blind prophet can see it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so as I was still kind of struggling with that word about running for politics, people began to come up and ask me, oh, when are you running for office? Oh, aren't you going to run this year? My relatives, people who were friends, other politicians, and I was constantly saying, oh, no, 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 I'm not running for office. But God knew that he had ordained me Amen. to be in the political arena for his glory. And so eventually I did, I ran, and funny time, many times, you know, when we receive a prophecy, we try to apply it to where we are right now. Yeah. We try to interpret the prophecy based on what we know right now. But just as you receive a prophecy, you also need to go back to heaven and ask God so that he can give you direction with that prophecy. Wow. Because yeah. where I received that prophecy, I would have naturally thought, oh, I'm running in this city because this is where I received the prophecy. Th these are the people that I know. This is the area I've been in for so many years. Naturally, that's where I would run. But right. God had a different idea. So I end up running in a city where I had no political connections where wow. I have, was not involved in any organizations. I didn't even know the um, district that I ended up running in. Yeah. Um, and so there were many reasons that I should not have won the seat. But one thing I know about God, yeah. when he says something yeah. and you listen carefully and you obey, despite every obstacle that the enemy puts in front of you, you are still more than a conqueror. Amen. Amen. And so I end up um, being elected, and I was elected and served for eight years. Wow. And um, the funny thing is now, when God anoints you for something and he calls you, he blesses you, you're so comfortable in that arena. Many times you just think, this is it. This is where I fit. I'm going to be here. Mm -hmm. And God can shift you anytime he wants to shift you. Yeah. And so while I'm doing so well in the political arena, God begins to speak that I'm moving on. I was not in agreement with the Lord with that because I thought, you know, I'm anointed for politics. So how can God change that? But God had a better idea. He knew that I was going to meet the man of God and that he would shift me now into working for his kingdom. Mm -hmm. So instead of being um, an ambassador for the United States, which I was actually working toward, I became an ambassador for heaven. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. And so I'm grateful to God for that. And um, I think that um, my background, though God has used for his benefit in the kingdom. Mm -hmm. And um, I believe that where I am now, the way I operate now, I was not um, moving in the prophetic arena before I met my husband. Mm -hmm. And so when many people look and they see now that, you know, oh, you're, you're prophesying and you're preaching and you're teaching, the thing is that my husband, because of the humbleness that he operates in mm -hmm. and the graciousness that he has about him and the fact that there is no competition between us in ministry yeah. um, no struggle he has promoted me in ministry wow. more than I've wanted to be in ministry <laughs> and um, so his training um, has served me very well and one thing I would want to end by saying you know the Bible says that when you become married the two become one flesh mm -hmm. and I think that's why we need to be so careful about what we do in terms of marriage and being very sure that it is heaven who has spoken mm -hmm. in a relationship because two become one yes. so what he has 
came to me. He paid a price. Many years in the woods, I would want to say, he spent time, you know, in Africa, they say in the bush, but he spent time <laughs> in the bush, in yes. the bush um, fasting and praying and crying out to the Lord for the prophetic anointing mm -hmm. for God to use him. And God honored that. You know, he's so faithful to his children. Now, I come along and I never go in the bush. <laughs> you know, I, I, I am um, fully an American woman. <laughs> um, I never had to go into the bush. But because he had already been in the bush and I married him, I became one with him, Amen. one flesh. And so his level of op operation allowed me not to start from the beginning, mm -hmm. but to pull on what was already in him as a wife, you know, mm -hmm. as a spouse. And um, I, I think um, it has served me well. Amen. Amen. You know, in watching the two of you guys, um, move in the spirit together and uh, and minister together. I think that that is something that's so unique mm -hmm. among uh, couples. You don't really see that happening too often, especially not in America or in any other country, really. And to see the way that God uses both of you guys and the way that you respect each other, even in ministry, is, is such a unique mm -hmm. gift and something that, again, like I said, you don't see very often. So you know, I think that that is a real huge testimony to people out there Praise who God. are looking to get married and find the right one as well. Mm -hmm. So how did that happen for you guys? How did you meet and how did how did God bring you guys together? I think people will definitely want to know. <laughs> the, way <we're> <laughs> the way we met was very uh, extraordinary. Uh, again, we talk about the grace of God. We can never exhaust the grace of God. Amen. His goodness. God is a good God. Amen. I was single, and I thought I was going to become single the rest of my life, become like Paul. You know, right. Because, you know, and, uh, <laughs> and I would think that I told people, well, I'm not going to get married. And I think, but one day, I was minding my own business, and then God showed me a beautiful picture, and a lady in a red dress. I saw it, I love me. I said, God, what is this? And God goes, oh, this girl is going to be your wife. I said, whoa, 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 this beautiful girl? <laughs> I said, Lord, where is she? And then God told me where she was. I was in San Antonio, Texas, and God told me she is in Florida. I mean, God, I mean, God, the way he orchestrates things, the way he symphonic things, the way God puts things, is just amazing. That shows that he's a parent. Mm -hmm. I mean, all good things come from God. Mm -hmm. And also, God told me, said, look, uh, I've shown you this beautiful girl. Uh, she was going to be your wife. And I, I never met her. I, I, it was, I was not even thinking of it. You know, God was the one who said this thing up. Mm -hmm. So I'm prefacing to say it was in the mind of the Lord. It was not in my mind. Amen. And so when he showed me uh, this beautiful lady, I, I said, God, do you still make beautiful girls like this? <laughs> and so I asked God, I said, where is this beautiful lady? And God said, she is in Florida, Miami. Meanwhile, I had an invitation several times from a pastor who was... Uh, 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 conducting a prophetic conference and he wanted me to be the keynote speaker but because of my schedule I was tired my schedule would not allow that so uh, at uh, several times I told him I wish I could do it I want to do it because it's a brother but my schedule will not la allow that mm -hmm. but the moment I hung the third phone out and God showed me this beautiful lady. I said, whoa, mm -hmm. I called the pastor. I said, guess what, Miami, here I come yesterday. <laughs> it's amazing what a beautiful girl can do for you. <laughs> so I called the pastor and then he was so happy and um, uh, you know, God had answered his prayer, but he didn't know it was a set up. God was about to set me up. You know, Amen. so I went to this conference, you know, uh, with intention. I said, I'll meet a girl because God said, this girl was in Miami, Florida, so I'm going to Florida. And I went uh, to the meeting. When I went to the meeting, as a prophet, I do this uh, uh, religiously or ritualistically, which is, I do that. Uh, I, I usually like to go to a meeting a little bit late. Reason being, I believe in integrity and I believe in the integrity of the Word of God. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to go and mix with the people and then talk or them telling me their problem and then get up and prophesy. That's not integrity. Mm -hmm. 
So I went to the, uh, the conference, the meeting, a little bit late, in the middle of worship. Mm -hmm. And when I went to sit down, I turned around and said, wait a minute, this beautiful lady in a red dress was sitting smack behind me. Wow. And that time they haven't worshipped. So I sat down, I prayed for a few seconds, I got up, I turned around, looked at the congregation, but really I was looking at the girl's face. I was checking it out, you know. <laughs> and I did that several times. Oh, praise God. I, I could not contain it. I said, God, I can't believe it. You're doing this to me. Here I've got a few minutes to preach, and now you put this beautiful girl, and my heart was throbbing. I said, oh my God. God, I'm in trouble. He was trying to speak in tongues. I couldn't get it. I mean, I, I, I don't know what was happening. I was really excited. And I said, wow. So uh, after uh, the pastor introduced me, uh, I did everything. I preached my best message just to impress, you know, at Dr. Beryl. And I, I prophesied, hey, man, you got to do, a man got to do what a man got to do. Absolutely. You know? <laughs> so I, I, you know, I prophesied. I did my best, you know, and then. Um, uh, then after the service, uh, the pastor, I was talking to some people, and the pastor said, Hey, Dr. Dixon, I'd like you to come and meet uh, somebody. And I didn't know who it was, uh, but uh, as I was walking toward the pastor, he was standing with Beryl. And she was in a beautiful dress. I knew she was the one. So I'd already put uh, my hand in the pocket, pick up my business card. And man, <laughs> God be ready, you know? <laughs> so the moment she shook my, the person introduced me, I just presented a card. I said, hey, ma'am, no, you got to be polite, you know? Absolutely. So I said, ma'am, this is my business card, you know? And, uh, the rest is history. And uh, we became friends. Mm -hmm. And then God began to orchestrate it, work at it. But uh, it took a long time. Mm -hmm. Beryl was a little bit stubborn and eh? he would not <laughs> acquiesce at once. So it took me almost two to three years for finally for her to say yes. But yeah, I really went through some challenges. But praise God, Amen. it was wow. worthwhile waiting. <laughs> that is a wonderful story. Amen. I think that I, I, as many times as I said it, I think that many people can feel really encouraged Amen. by Amen. your story and and just the way that you guys met and the way that God had just orchestrated everything in your lives and how to see where you guys are at today and know that there's a story behind it. Amen. That God didn't just, you know, take you from A to B, but there was Amen. a journey along the way. Yes. And that kind of that kind of story in life is so encouraging to people who are watching and other people in who want to develop in the ministry as well. And I know it But I went me. through the challenges. You know? yes. I, I thought, I mean, this was what I really uh, got messed up because I thought God is showing me this lady, beautiful lady in the red dress. And I thought when I meet her, she's just going to run and say, hallelujah, <laughs> here I am. But I went through the challenges. You know, I, you know after we became friends and uh, we went to a restaurant, she asked me, um, you see, men are funny. Many times we think we know ladies. Mm -hmm. The ladies, men, they are, they are sharper and smarter. And they know us, you know. And so she asked me, not knowing she had known, she had suspected, but that I was interested in it. But I thought, man, I'm just going to be cool. I'm going to hide my feelings. So we went to, I took her to a nice, beautiful, candlelight dinner. So when we sat down, they brought the menu. She just popped the question. What is your intention about me? Uh, my mom began to form. I said, oh, 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 oh. I, I mean, I was not expecting it. So after I told her, I said, look, my intention is saying, no, I like you and uh, I'm interested in you. And, you know, you go through all the cliche. I said, if the Lord allow him, I'm praying. She, she said, what are you trying to say? I said, look, I'm interested in you. I'd like to date you. In the future, I'd like to marry you. And she has seen me ministry several times. So I thought, wow. I'm going to sit back and I'm going to get this accolade. And she's going to say, wow. And the next night, her, she said, do you know what? You're a good prophet. I said, I know that. <laughs> Man, I had ego in her like this. You know? <laughs> so she said, I know you're a good prophet. I said, I know that. You don't have to tell me. She said, but I'll tell you what. You are not my type. Oh, my God. I got so deflated. And on the lady uh, came and said, okay, can I take your menu? I said, I'm not hungry. <laughs> I've been dumped and you want me to eat? <laughs> so I went through challenges for about almost a, a 12 months, and she would not acquiesce. And she said, look, you're a good prophet, but you're not my type. Wow. When I asked her, 
what is your type? She said, I'm too short. And she went all <laughs> through everything. And I really got depressed. But you know what? I trusted the Lord. That is what people have to see. When God tells you things, it may not, at times it will happen instantaneously. Mm -hmm. But at times you have to go through the process. Yeah. You know, Absolutely. and uh, I thought uh, God was just uh, uh, just going to bring the girl and she was just going to fall down and say, oh, prophet, this and no. She said, you're not my type. I've not heard from God. And uh, I really got confused. I just, because I like the girl. Mm -hmm. And many times I would go to God. I said, God, you know what? It's not fair. You know, I didn't know this beautiful lady. You set it up. You, you've created this chaos in my life. And I say, Lord, but the program is not working. You see, I had an agenda. I wanted it to happen yesterday, but God wants me to go through the natural process. If I say the natural process, the normal process, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, after a long time, I, finally I gave up. So one day I called her on Saturday. Uh, I was so down depressed. I said, Beryl, do you know what? I think I came in your life to be a blessing, but I see this program is not working. So this is going to be my last time I'm going to call you. Uh, so when I said that, I hung up. And you see, men, we think we know women, and women, we th they think they know men. She called me back. She said, did I tell you that you are pain in the neck and you know, go through? Then my mom said, wait a minute, I think the girl likes me. But she doesn't know she likes me. You know, so at least I hung on for another six months, you know. Wow. You know but man, the program was not working. Cut a long story short. So one day I really got frustrated, almost down. I mean, I was really down. So I went to God. I said, God, I think this is my final thing. Uh, it's not working. Uh, Lord, I don't understand. I wanted to understand the mind of the Lord. But you see, we got to submit. You know, the Bible says, they that wait upon the Lord. You know, mm -hmm. I had my, my preconceived idea. I had my agenda. But God, in His perfect time, He has a purpose. He had a higher plan. I didn't know it. Mm -hmm. So after all this, then I told God, and God said, look, she's worth waiting for. <laughs> God's so frustrated. I said, Lord, whose side are you on? <laughs> I'm your prophet, you know. <laughs> she's, supposed, she's supposed to be, you know, uh, telling me all this. And God said, no, she's worth, worth waiting for. So I said, Lord, what do I do? So God told me three things. That was the final sign, uh, the final thing that was going to happen. God told me three things are going to happen. So I called her early in the morning. She was having breakfast. And I said, Dr. Barrow, uh, three things are going to happen. No, first I ask. I say, would you do whatever God tells you to do? She said, absolutely. I said, really, I got this lady. So I hung up. And she called me back. Why did you ask me that question? Then I didn't want to tell her, but she, no, first she pushed me. I told her. I said, three things are going to happen. If they happen, you can run, you can hide. You know there's going to be a wedding. You're going to be my wife. And I told her those three things. She laughed. Mm. You know, first I told her, you're going to have a dream. And I described the dream. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's no way you can tell somebody's going to have a dream and describe and what is going to happen. But I, I had confidence in God, not confidence in myself. Mm -hmm. I tr the Bible said, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not onto your own understanding. In mm -hmm. all that ways, acknowledge Him. So I've heard from God. The Bible says in uh, John chapter 10, verse 27, my sheep hear my voice. Mm -hmm. I've already heard the voice of God, so I can take that word to the bank. Mm -hmm. So I told her things, uh, that uh, dream, she, 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 oh, she laughed at me. The second sign was, you're going to be driving and then you'll be overwhelmed. And then you're going to be thinking about this wedding and you pull by the side, you make plans. Man, that was the most ridiculous person, and, 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 the most ridiculous thing you can tell a person. I mean, she laughed at me. She said, now I really know there's not going to be a wedding. I said, don't worry. We'll see. Mm -hmm. May the best person win. <laughs> and I told her, the, uh, uh, how would you call it, the next thing that was going to happen. And then uh, I went. She went away. I went my way uh, within two weeks. When she had a dream, I called her. She was having breakfast. And I said, hey, you had a breakfast. Are you okay, you had a dream last night, eh? She said, how did you know? But when I said that, she hung up. 
Three things, one is come, two more. The second thing happened, I call it. The third thing happened. Why did I do that? Because I trusted the Lord. Amen. And God showed me it was God who put it there. So in our ways, if we can trust God, God will bring the things to happen. And finally, she gave in and we got married. But I think you said something very important, which is that many times when you receive a prophetic word, you think that it is automatic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You receive a word, you think that this is definitely going to happen and it's going to happen in a very smooth manner. But I think what we don't always understand is that the enemy, the one who is after you, mm -hmm. after your destiny, who is out to destroy you, he is not going to give you a red carpet mm -hmm. for what God has spoken over your life. So we think that challenges aren't going to come. They are going to come because the very word that heaven has spoken, the enemy does not want to see manifest on earth. Mm -hmm. And so you don't receive a red carpet. Mm -hmm. Understand that, and that's why the Bible says to do warfare over the word that's been spoken oh, over your life. Good. So mm -hmm. take the prophetic word that God has given you the blueprint of heaven for your destiny. Do warfare with it, just as it says in Tim Timothy. Defeat the enemy who is coming against your prophetic word and watch yourself walk in victory over what God has spoken over your life. Amen. Wow. I think that this you know, conversation has been so uh, fulfilling and answering so many questions for people who are watching about prophecy, what it entails, and how someone who is even receiving a word of prophecy can know how to handle it when it comes. I think people, everybody wants to hear a word from God, but right. oftentimes we don't know how to handle that word. Amen. So I truly believe that people who are watching this are, are going to learn so much and know what to do on the I next step. I think that is our problem. And again, I said, now when God said it, I had my preconceived idea. Mm -hmm. I mean, can you imagine you sitting there, mind your own business, and God tell you something? Mm -hmm. I thought she was just going to run, she was going to scream, but she said no. I mean, when she said no, I was the most confused person on the planet <laughs> at that time. It is just like God telling Moses, Go tell my I know go tell Pharaoh let my people go. Mm -hmm. God tells us something. You see, we got to wait upon God. We got to understand the revelation, the rhema, and then allow God. It have to go. It have to pass the litmus test. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, if God is spoken to you, you don't have to take that word and manipulate people. Yeah. When you manipulate yeah. people, it's a form of witchcraft yes. and God yes. hates witchcraft. Yes. Even when I was going out with Dr. Barrow as friends, I never told her my plan mm -hmm. until she asked me. I didn't say God said. And we got to be careful putting God's signature on mm -hmm. everything. Yes. Amen. Amen. You know, if God said it, okay, let it pass the litmus test. Mm -hmm. I mean, can you imagine a prophet, God showed me something and it took me almost three years. I mean, the, the, the day that uh, we're talking on the phone and Dr. Barrow said, I love you, I was such an idiot. I got so excited and she hung up. I called her, I said, did you, did, you, did, you, did you hear what you said? She said, you get away. No. <laughs> I, I was so excited. And that's what we have to learn. When God tells us something, let's keep it in our heart. Let's take it. Let's begin to pray about it and let it run its own course. Yeah. Rather than manipulating and trying to let things happen. That's what the prophetic gets into trouble with other people's life. So it's God's blueprint. It's his word. It will come to pass if it's God. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Well, thank you so much for coming and sharing your Praise story God. with us and, and helping myself and the viewers to understand a little bit more about the prophetic ministry and what God is doing in your guys' lives. Mm -hmm. And we just want to ask you if you can pray for our viewers, mm -hmm. um, maybe whatever God has put on your heart for whoever mm -hmm. may be watching at this point in time, uh, to pray for them so that they can connect with the Spirit of God. I'd like to pray in there, Dr. Burrow, okay. if you feel pray. Mm -hmm. I know uh, you're watching us and our things. Uh, the Bible says, can two walk together? Except they agree. Mm -hmm. And uh, who are you agreeing with? Who are you walking Amen. with? Mm -hmm. As a child of God, you're going through confusion. If you're a child of God, one, we encourage you to come to the cross to get Amen. saved. Because mm -hmm. You want to get something, but you don't want to serve God. It is very, very important. Give your life to God. Amen. So whatever you're going through, look, God loves you. The Bible said, for God so loved the world that he gave. He's given his very best, his only begotten son. Really, in the Greek, is his one of a kind. We are all God's sons and, and, and daughters. 
So it's not God's only begotten son. It's more than that if you break it in the Greek. It means God's one of a kind, unique son. Mm. You know, so as we accept him, he breaks, he delivers from a, a calamity a thing, and he gives us a visa and a, a passport to heaven. You're going to go to heaven as you accept Jesus Christ. But people that are going through a different thing say, God has given me a dream. God has spoken to you or somebody has prophesied to you. How does that work? Begin to take that word. Keep it in your heart. Begin to pray. Line up with the word of the Lord. Trust the Lord. Lean not unto your own understanding. If it's God, it will come to pass. The key is to love God. The key is to trust the Lord. And the key is to wait for the timing of the Lord. Amen. Because to everything, there's a season, there's a time. So I'd like to pray for you uh, after Dr. Beryl says whatever. Sweetie, what do you think? Uh, no, I, I, I think everything you said is fantastic. I think that um, we need to come to a place where we recognize that God has your best in his Amen. mind. Trust his word. Trust the prophetic word, trust the Logos word, trust the Rhema word. Allow God to speak to your situation and then have an ear to hear how he chooses to work it out. Mm -hmm. Obey him at every step, not just at the receiving of the word, but at the walking out of the word as well. Mm -hmm. And you will see that your destiny will line up and mirror what heaven has spoken over you. Amen. And we're talking about a prophetic word. I'm a prophet. My wife is a prophet. I, I was not born a prophet, but when God gave me the gift, I took time and developed it. And so when I married my wife, instead of uh, st starting from the scratch, she jumped on my shoulders and the revelation, what I knew, she took it from there. And it's amazing if my wife prophesies better than me. And it's good, you know, the student should be better than the teacher because Hallelujah. the revelation. And so uh, those who want to, those who are interested and hungry about the prophetic, if you go to uh, the Facebook of uh, Prophet Charles Dixon, we have materials, we want to train and teach people how to understand how to move in the prophetic. And the modular that I use to train my wife who want to give to the body of Christ because it's not exclu it's not my exclusive gift. It is for the body of Christ. Hallelujah. What have we got that was not given? And I want to impart it. We want to teach. We want to help people. So go to our Facebook, Prophet Charles Dixon, and uh, we can help you. Let's pray. Father God, in Jesus' name, I speak to people that are watching. Meet every need. And Father God, I pray your grace, your mercy, your blessing to come upon them. Those that are struggling to find Christ, Father, give them the light. Let the darkness move out of their life. Let the blood of Jesus Christ wash them. I pray for people in bandages. I curse every devil, every spirit in their life. Father, those that need healing, Mando, Karam, Mandelia, Jebanto, Kandeka, Zabrando, I speak whom the sun set free, shall be free indeed. Yes. Father, liberate your children, set them free, set the captives free. Father, loose the healing, your presence upon them. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray for marriages, I pray yes. for people who need healing. By your strength, they are healed. Amen. Your word is not powerful, the integrity of the word of the Lord. Father, I decree, I declare your word upon the viewers. Let yes. their life be, uh, be changed and transformed. Because the Bible says, but my God yes. shall supply all their needs. Father, do it for them. Because you are God yesterday, today, and forevermore. Yes. As you did for Beryl, you did for Dixon, you can do the same thing for me. Father, I bless them in yes. Jesus' name. I, I command healing to flow. I command the pain uh, to live. And right now, as I'm praying that somebody uh, that you're feeling, uh, I don't know what is asthma or some, you're feeling it uh, 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 on your side here. And uh, for the last for three, four days, you've been going through all the uh, distance, uh, uh, just short breath, short breath, but I speak healing unto you. Uh, uh, the, uh, there's a lady uh, uh, that uh, I'm seeing, you have just had an accident and you are sitting on the sofa, uh, uh, you're sitting by the television, but the television is not on, you are looking at your wounds and, and you are so depressed, you're going through things, but uh, if you call, uh, the number on your screen, uh, they will pray for you. God wants to touch you. God wants to heal you. There's a lady uh, that uh, uh, for the last 
six weeks you you find uh, um, these uh, papers and i see these papers it's a divorce uh, 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 papers mm -hmm. and you are depressed uh, 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 i hear that god wants to turn the things around if you will trust god if you call the number on your screen god will heal uh, i'm experiencing a lot of miracles dr Beryl, do you feel something yeah i i just hear in my spirit that there's a person actually you're a student and you're in school almost it looks like a college or community college or a college, an institution, and you went through a situation and it's really impacted your health. You're about to take time off and even not finish this portion of your education because of the health situation. But God says, trust him now for healing. You won't need to take any time off. The healing power of God is flowing through you right now. God says, trust me, believe in me. He, the Bible says he sent his word and it did heal. It's the word of God that's becoming alive in your flesh. The DNA of God, the power of God flowing through you to heal your body and you will complete your education. Uh, there's a young lady I want to speak to you right now. Uh, God really loves you. You have just been broken up with your boyfriend and this is the last three and a half uh, uh, days and you are so depressed and you think you can't live anymore. No, uh, woman shall not live by man alone. Mm -hmm. Trust in the Lord. Look to God. God wants to change it. This thing, God really did you a favor. And uh, you're going to find out why this breakup took place. And if you will look to God, if you trust God, if you call the number of your screen, there are people who are trained. Uh, they are really anointed. They love you and they want to help you. Not a man can help you, but God. Amen. God bless you. And thank you so much God for you. being with us today. Amen. We are so blessed to have you guys with us. And we know that God is going to continue to do more in your ministry. And Hungry Generation is praying for you guys constantly. Thank you thank so you. much. Thank you so much. And viewers, we are so thankful that you were with us today. If that was you that God Almighty has prophesied to, we want to hear from you. So please contact us write the comments below in this video or you can contact us directly here at this church or come and visit us even better yet and meet us in person because we want to hear from you and we want to be able to give glory to God for what he has done in your life through this wonderful prayer and also through what God Almighty is doing in your life just by listening to the story of uh, Prophet Charles Dixon and Dr. Barrow. We know that all of you guys have been so blessed and we want to hear more from you so please feel free to contact us so we'd love to hear from you. Thank you so much for watching and God bless you. God bless. God bless.